Tablets of Creation, Tablet 4. They founded for him a majestic canopy. He, Marduk, seated himself in the seat of kingship in the presence of his fathers, who said unto him, Thou art honorable by reason of thy greatness among the gods. Thy position is unrivaled. The words thou utterest become anum, as fixed in the sky. Thou art honorable by reason of thy greatness among the gods. Thy position is unrivaled. The words thou utterest become anum. From this day forward, thy command shall not be abrogated. The power to exalt to heaven and to cast down to the earth, both shall be in thy hand. That which goes forth from thy mouth shall be established. Against thy utterance there will be no appeal. No one among the gods shall overstep thy boundary. Worship, which is the object of the sanctuary of the gods, whenever so they lack it, shall be forthcoming in thy sanctuary. O God, Marduk, thou art our avenger. We have given unto thee sovereignty over the whole creation. Thou shalt sit down. In the council thy word will be exalted. Thy weapon shall never fail from thy hand. It shall break the head of thy foe. Lord, whoever puts his trust in thee, spare thou his life. And the God who devises evil, pour thou out his soul. Then a cloak, literally one cloak, was set in their midst. The elements of Doctor Strange and a doctor in ancient Babylon would be Azu. They addressed the god Marduk, their firstborn son, saying, Thou, Lord, shall hold the foremost position among the gods. Decree thou the throwing down, and the building up, and it shall come to pass. Speak but the word, and the cloak will disappear. Speak a second time, and the cloak shall return, uninjured. Marduk spoke the word, the cloak disappeared. He spoke a second time, the cloak reappeared. When the gods, his fathers, saw the issue of the utterance of his mouth, they rejoiced and adored him, saying, Marduk is king. They conferred upon him the scepter, the throne, and the symbol of royalty. They gave him the unrivaled weapon, the destroyer of the enemy, saying, Go, cut off the life of Tiamat. Let the wind carry her blood into the depth under the earth. The gods, his fathers, issued the decree for the god Bel. They set him on the road, which leads to peace and adoration. He strung his bow, he set ready his weapon in the stand. He slung his spear, he attached it to his belly. He grasped it in his right hand. The bow and quiver he hung at his side. He set the lightning in front of him. His body was filled with a glancing flame of fire. I remind you, the word flame means demonic agency. And the god Zu would be Agent 47. Even the term Azu, meaning doctor, would be Alpha 47. But the letter A is also the ultimate form of the pentagram, as you can mean pentagram 47. Demonic agency 47. He made a net wherewith to enclose Tiamat. He made the four winds take up their position so that no part of her may escape. The south wind, the north wind, the east wind, and the west wind. He held the net close to his side, the gift from his father, Anu, 
He created the foul wind, the parching blast, the wind of four, the wind of seven, the typhoon, the wind incomparable. He dispatched the seven winds which he had made to make turbid the inward parts of Tiamat. They followed in his train his mighty weapon. He went up into his chariot, the unequaled and terrible tempest. And here we have the elements of Phaethon, the fallen one, son of Phobos, Fear, the lion-faced god. He went up into his chariot. He yoked thereto a team of four horses, pawing the ground, champing, foaming, eager to fly. The odor of their teeth bore forwardness. They were skilled in biting. They were trained to trample underfoot. Lines 55 to 57 are too fragmentary to translate. They continue the description of Marduk's equipment. His brightness streamed forth. His head was crowned thereby. He took the direct path. He hastened on his journey. He set his face towards the place of Tiamat. On his lips, biting, he restrained. Shah Ur, his hand grasped. At that moment, the gods were gazing upon him with fixed intensity. The gods, his fathers, gazed upon him. They gazed upon him. The Lord approached. He looked upon the middle of Tiamat. He searched out the plan of Kingu, her husband. Marduk looked. Kingu staggered in his gait. His will was destroyed. His motion was paralyzed. And the gods, his helpers, who were marching by his side, saw the collapse of their chief, and their sight was staggered, and their sight was troubled. Tiamat shrieked, but did not turn her head. With lips full of rebellious words, she maintained her stubbornness. That thou hast come as the lord of the gods, forsooth. They have appointed thee in the place that should be theirs. The lord raised up the wind storm, his mighty weapon against Tiamat, who was furious. He sent it, saying, Thou hast made myself mighty, thou art puffed upon high. Thy heart has stirred thee up to invoke battle. Lines 79 and 80 are missing. Thou hast exalted King U to be thy husband. Thou hast made him to usurp the attributes of Anu. Thou hast planned evil against the gods, my fathers. Thou hast wrought evil. Let now thy troops gird themselves up. Let them bind on their weapons. Stand up, thou and I. Let us to the fight. On hearing these words, Tiamat became like a mad thing. Her senses became distraught. Tiamat uttered shrill cries again and again. That on which she stood split in twain at the words. She recited an incantation. She pronounced her spell. The gods of battle demanded their weapons. Tiamat and Marduk, the envoy of the gods, roused themselves. They advanced to fight each other. They drew nigh in battle. The reason for this is that the army are the gods and they are on both sides of the fence. The Lord cast his net and made it to enclose her, the evil wind that had its place behind him. The Lord cast his net and made it to enclose her, the evil wind that had its place behind him. He let out in her face. Tiamat opened her mouth to its greatest extent. Marduk made the evil wind enter it, whilst her lips were unclosed. The raging winds filled out her belly, 
Her heart was gripped. She opened wide her mouth, panting. Marduk grasped the spear. He split up her belly. He clave open her bowels. He pierced her heart. He brought her to nothing. He destroyed her life. He cast down her carcass. He took up his stand upon it. After Marduk had slain Tiamat, the chief, her host was scattered. Her Levi's became fugitive, and the gods, her allies, who had marched by her side, quaked in terror, and broke and ran, and betook themselves to flight, to save their lives. But they found themselves hemmed in, they could not escape. Marduk tied them up, he smashed their weapons, they were cast into the net, and they were caught in the snare. The whole of the world they filled with their cries of grief. They received Marduk's chastisement. They were confined in restraint. And on the eleven creatures, which Tiamat had filled with awfulness, the company of devils that marched by her side. He threw fetters. He restrained their sides. They and their resistance he trod under his feet. The god Kingu, who had been magnified over them, he crushed. He esteemed him as little worth, as the god Dugar, as a dead god. That would be the Uddug, the Utuku, an ambiguous class of demons, where they are not named. Much like the gods on both sides of this tablet, the Uddug, the Utuku, are referred to as it and they which is the same in the Seven Tablets of Creation. The gods are referred to as they, and the weapon is referred to as it. Marduk took from him the Tablets of Destinies, which should never have been his. He sealed it with a seal, and fastened it on his breast. After he had crushed and overthrown his enemies, he made the haughty enemy to be like dust under feet. He established completely Anshar's victory over the enemy. The valiant Marduk achieved the object of Nudimud, Iyar. He imposed strict restraint on the gods who he had made captive. He turned back to Tiamat, whom he had defeated. The Lord Marduk trampled on the rump of Tiamat. With his unsparing club, he clave her skull. He split open the channels of her blood. He caused the North Wind to carry it away to a place underground. His fathers, the gods, looked on. They rejoiced. They were glad. They brought unto him offerings of triumph and peace. The Lord Marduk paused. He examined Tiamat's carcass. He separated flesh from hair. He worked cunningly. He slit Tiamat open like a flat fish, cut into two pieces. The one half he raised up and shaded the heavens therewith. He pulled the bolt. He posted a guard. He ordered them not to let her water escape. He crossed the heavens. He contemplated the regions thereof. He took himself to the abode of Nudimud, that is the opposite to the deep Apsu. The Lord Marduk measured the dimensions of the deep. He founded Ishara, a place like unto it, the abode of Ishara, which he made to be heaven. He made the gods Anu, Bel and Iya to inhabit their own cities.
please hit that notification bell to ensure that you are notified of each upload. Share, like, comment and subscribe to support the channel. For more Mythology 7 documentaries.